Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Unbound. I'm Nicola Humber, author of Unbound and founder of the Unbound Press. And today I'm delighted to be joined by author of Finding Lily, Elizabeth Goddard. Welcome, welcome Liz. Good to have you here. Thank you. And we were just having a conversation before we came on about like the challenge of like what do we call ourselves. I think that's the great thing about when you write a book, you can just call yourself author of rather than having to think about what is it that I do in the world (laughs) it's something solid that we can (laughs) it all changes as well don't you know I I, especially for women you know we can we can have so many different careers so many different you know um hats you know whether you're a mother or a wife or a you you know there's so many different variants so I think it's ever evolving ever changing Absolutely. And it is definitely a challenge, you know, for a lot of the women in my community, you know, we're unbound women, we're multifaceted, we have all of these different things that we're doing in our lives. And like you said, it's an evolving process. Mm. So to find like a few words that describe what we do is... Yeah. And isn't that being bound up as well? Being bound into, yeah, into something. And I always look like this is not what I thought we'd end up talking about. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I always look at what people, or very often I like look at what people call themselves and I just think, oh, it doesn't really fully express like who yeah. you are or what you, yeah. like the magical yeah. being that you are. Yeah, so, like yeah. the label, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So Liz, great to have you here with me today. And I do generally start these conversations with the same question because obviously... As we've just been talking about the theme of um, of this show and all of my work is being unbound, so being your fullest, freest self. But I'm curious to know if there's been a time in your life or a situation where you felt particularly bound and how you moved beyond that. Oh my God, which one do I pick? Exactly, there's always more than a lot more. Which one do I pick? Um... Ah, oh, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I just feel bound by life. You know, I don't, I th- and that's, a, if I take it as a gene- generically, mm-hmm. um, my whole life, I, don't, I think I felt bound, you, you know? Um, so I never felt I fitted in. I never felt I found that what I was supposed to be doing, you know, um, so maybe, and I can take individual things, but I think from really early childhood, I can, yeah, I can say I felt bound into the family that I grew up with that I still don't think understand me and how I, who I am and how I, how I work through things and, um, yeah. That fitting in, <laughs> the, particularly the spiritual side, because mm-hmm. um, I was brought up in a really in a Catholic household, and um, yeah, it doesn't thinking outside of the box isn't really a, a good quality. In <laughs> it's not encouraged. <laughs> yeah. Not encouraged. <laughs> Speaking isn't encouraged. Thinking isn't encouraged. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I think a lot of the um my learning uh because I went back to college and I you know started to um when I was a lot later like my kids were um you know my youngest I think she must have been about five or six something like that seven and um yeah so I went it's as if I went and did my studying later mm-hmm. and not, I like the whole school thing just was not for me. I did not get it. But, you know, the whole spiritual schooling, oh, that was, I just couldn't get enough of, it was, it was the bit that I was missing, I think. So mm-hmm. if I could have gone to spiritual school at the end, <laughs> instead of a state school, I've been, oh, wow. like, yeah. <laughs> I think that's why so many people, or certainly, you know, a lot of the, the women, a lot of the mothers that I know right now are choosing to homeschool because, you know, our, our schooling system does feel yeah. so limiting. 
I am watching, I'm, I've, I'm watching a, um, a young couple on YouTube that are traveling the world on a catamaran and they have had, they've got a baby with them now. So she's given birth and had a baby and they've got a baby on board. And I know it's snippets of a week. Mm. I know it's not everything that happens, but that baby is so connected to both parents, not just one, both parents. Mm -hmm. And um, and it may and, and there's another one. I, I found them via some another one, and and they they've taken their kids out homeschooling, and and I saw a clip um, of an, another. Um, a program or whatever it you know uh that's coming up this week and it's interviewing other parents that are homeschooling their kids and traveling around the world and one of them said my kid the kids are growing up too quickly and 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 i really not and not in a i don't think it was a power craze i need to control my family sort of thing but they're exposed to so much and there's so much bullying and negativity and all of this going on and i'm just thinking wow that i mean homeschooling yeah i mean i don't think it would have been for, would have worked for me but yeah i think it's a really positive thing i wish i could have done it for my kids mm. um, yeah 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 and you know i love how you answered that first question liz by you know acknowledging that the whole of life <laughs> <laughs> we kind of choose to come here don't we to have this <laughs> yeah. human experience and the uh, very... yeah it is and it's i um i do i do something called soul plan reading it was part of mm. when i did my um i did a spiritual life coaching course about 10 years ago something like that and and it was one of the modules and um you can take it as a standalone module it was part of the thing it was actually the one thing i don't it was weird but it was the one thing that made me do that course because mm -hmm. i really was really intrigued by it now that is about our names and the energies that we bring in mm -hmm. and um one of the really strong energies that's playing out for me at the moment is an 8 8 and that's all the grounding and not wanting to be here and i did some work it was it must have been two years ago and and that was all over that was around my birth as well and getting stuck and and i i really actually believe that i don't i really did not want to, it was something that was sort of not forced upon me but in a way i do feel that maybe it was forced upon me right you're getting down there now and this is what you've got to learn <laughs> oh my goodness that's so interesting i think our birth experience is so important and when i think about like the way i came into the world i was late coming in and they I, I you know my mum was induced and i was pulled out with forceps like, I, I really didn't yes, want to come into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think i was like 13 days i might have been a week late i can't know i think it was, I was about a week late. 13 days and pulled out with forceps and that's one of the things we were doing uh, as part of this healing, I, I was, um, it, <laughs> it was, and I, it, I, they were saying, I go back to the earliest memory and it was, oh, all I've got is this pain around my head. All I've got is this, and that was all I could think of that I <laughs> don't want to be here and I was being dragged out. So, yeah. yeah so interesting isn't it yeah. and i know when i've spoken about this before that other women have come forward and like you know been thinking about their birth experience and how yeah. it was for them and the impact yeah. it has on us <laughs> that's huge but you know we're not kind of taught anything about that are no, we? <laughs> also i think it's a good reference because mm. maybe this is why some people struggle and it, i definitely struggle with grounding yeah and, um definitely definitely struggle with being grounded i'm either way too grounded or i'm just not here at all yeah so, I think you know that that sort of learning and and part of that experience which I'm sort of trying to embody at the moment is and that's through like the book finding Lily and I um I I uh, got sort of confirmation the other day um via um uh the tr guy that I trained with and uh and I was thinking yeah yeah that, that is it that's exactly what it is and and it's um sharing the emotion stuff the the, the stuff that people don't want to talk about Mm -hmm. and um yeah but i think i think understanding that helps you understand where it is you didn't fit in yeah you know? yeah I mean, yeah 
It makes it makes sense, doesn't yeah. it? And you reflect yeah. back on that. Yeah, and I think sometimes when we've got the knowledge behind it, it makes it easier to understand and then maybe adjust stuff or, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, support <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ra- rather than judging ourselves yeah. for like, yeah. oh, why do I always feel like this? It's like, we're well, no wonder. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Total taste, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned finding Lily there, Liz. So tell us some more about about that book and what made you decide to write Finding Lily. Okay, well, I do, don't think I had that. That decision was made for me. It wasn't yeah. my decision. Yeah. Um, I went away. I was going through like um, I was in denial of what was going on in my life. And I was in complete denial and I was going away for five weeks. And um, the first week I, I was away, it just came out. It just fell out of me. And as I was writing it, I started to... I'd already seen similarities. I'd already seen the crossovers of, of relationships. But it was just like somebody was going, look, look, you know... Mm-hmm. Um, finding Lily is, um, it's a, it's over, it's, the story is over a, a, something like a three week period, might be a little bit longer than that. And, um, I've written it in fiction, but it's about something that actually happened. You know, it's about a true story, but I've written mm-hmm. it in fiction and it's about the emotion and pain that you, that, that as an intuitive, I can see in other people that other people might not see. Um, and it's about having the understanding of, um, it's two situations. So I have no idea, this, this woman is in this, uh, is in this coffee house and I'm picking up on her emotion as an intuitive. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's making me sort of go back in time and I remember the pain and my pain was about this. And, you know, and that's how it was sort of bringing up triggers or emotions. And, it, and I don't know where that story came. Do, do, I mean, I don't know why it came up. I don't know why I had to do it. I don't know why I wrote it, I wrote it in the way that I, it was written. I, I just don't know. It was as if it was like the final part. It was, the story was 26 years old. Mm-hmm. And um, it was something that I thought I'd, I'd healed and I'd put away. I think initially when it happened, I closed the door on it and I, you know, shoved it in a box somewhere and I, I didn't address it and it was very painful. And then um, it was around about the time I was doing my life coaching, it was after I qualified, uh, maybe it was a couple of years after, and I went on a, on a weekend course and the, um, and the picture of Lily came out as a, as a guide mm-hmm. and I looked at this girl. I'd already done some healing the day before around it about drawing healing out for emotion and coloring and, and stuff, which is really, really powerful. And, um, so that's the cover of the book. And then I, yeah, so I thought I'd done it. I thought in 2012, when I was dealing with this, I thought that bit's done. Yeah. But it wasn't, it was obviously more of a message, you know, to come up. And I think sometimes when we're ready, it, you know, or maybe like, oh, we've waited too long for you to get this yourself. We're going to... That's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Got no choice now. We can't... <laughs> You're not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about, you know, we were just talking about the birth process and you just speaking about how finding Lily Kett just came and just fell out of you. <laughs> that would be, yeah, I couldn't do that myself. <laughs> it literally, I just started writing and, and I was like, whoa. And I did it on, in longhand as well, which I yeah. think is really powerful, really yes. powerful. Yeah. So part of the story was, was you know, healing that. And, um, and then it turned into a book and it was like, whoa. You know, and again, it was, it's like, do I publish it? You know, it's quite a personal, mm. personal journey. Do you do something with it? And I was at, <laughs> I was at a network. No, I wasn't. I was, a, I was at a workshop, like a two-day workshop. And the girl sat sitting next to me and was like, well, I've got a publisher, but I really don't know how to start my book. And I was like, oh, I've got a book. But I don't know how to get it published. <laughs> and that's how it happened. So, yeah. yeah. And we went, through, yeah, it was through Sean. So. Yeah, through that guy's house. So Liz and I um, share yeah. a publisher. We've 
both published with that guy's house, which yeah. has been a wonderful experience. It like, has, yeah. Really has. So do you, did you know that you were writing a book when it was coming through? Or was it just like, like this is coming and I'm allowing it? Did you I, it was, it? I think when I was doing it by, I, I know I had, I know I had a conversation, but I don't know who the conversation is with in that if I'm only doing this for my, I, I might only be doing this for myself and that's yeah. fine. And then it was like, it might be just for one person picks this up. And I've had loads of people that have come back to me and said, you know, oh, wow, I've experienced something similar and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But I had the, I had the yeah, I, had, I don't know who I was having this conversation with. I had, I had one the other day and I kept saying, and I, these thoughts, it was, it was over five days, but I don't want my car written off and I don't know where it was coming from. And then, uh, then my car got written off. And it was <laughs> like, but who was I talking to? Who, I, that's what I'm trying to... Was it a dream? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't. I just can't think I, but I really don't want my car written off, you know, and uh, yeah. So I'm not quite sure who, who I was talking to when I was sorting out whether the book was to be published or not be published or, but I definitely had, it was one-sided conversation <laughs> anyway with, you know, I, so yeah, whether that was part of the download, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I love hearing about different people's like book writing process and how they came to kind of writing the book and sharing it and yeah, there's something really magical about Yeah, it. I think, yeah, it's, um, it's when you have to work hard at something. So I've got this other book which I was trying to write and um, it just didn't feel right. It yeah. really didn't, just didn't feel right and um and it hasn't happened and then yeah. out of nowhere there's another one so you know um i think i got so like now i've got to write this book i said i was going to write it i've got to write it and yeah maybe maybe and I, I, maybe it comes later maybe it's you know well this is a thing and i do feel like there's a specific order to you know a lot of us have got different ideas for books and like you said sometimes it could be like oh, this isn't really working with this one i don't get it yeah. and then another idea comes through and maybe through like writing and releasing that it clears yeah. the way for this other one to come yeah through, you know? yeah it was a weird project that i was doing because I didn't really know what to put on YouTube and fill up a YouTube, my YouTube channel with. And I just thought, oh, okay. And then I started, oh, no, I put it all on there. What do I do with it? So I then started using Instagram. And then, uh, and then I got a text message saying, God, I hope this is your second book. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I never even thought about it. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's kind of a theme here, isn't it? Like your books are coming through in a way that, it's yeah, like you don't, don't even realize their books and they just come yeah. through with yeah. Such ease. Yeah. 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 You know, so this this was a little bit harder. So because I wanna it's yeah, there's a bit of fact in there and I can't make sure it's right. <laughs> so it's, in my head it is. So I'm like, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, people are saying other things and I'm like yeah, I don't think that's right. But, um, you know, but I think everyone's just repeating, like, in certain arenas, it's, I forget, it's repeating. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So tell us about this new book that you're kind of magically working on without realising. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of finished. Yeah. Um, it's called The A to Z of Emotional Abuse. Mm-hmm. So it was something that I went down, I fell down this rabbit hole that I then couldn't get out of. And I was so like, oh my God, you know, is this what's been going on? And all my relationships, they're not with um, the narcissist, the sociopaths and the psychopaths, but because um, we're all on that scale. And um, but it, I did a lot of healing around uh, relationships and the stuff that came through at the time. And then I was thinking, oh, what can I, you know, do um, 
and, and this A to Z came up. So I started recording. I did some Facebook lives on it. I think that's mm -hmm. how it worked. So they then downloaded them in and cut them into YouTube videos. And then I started posting them on Instagram and, and I got some artwork, uh, did some artwork. And um, yeah, so it's the A to Z of emotional abuse. It's uh, all the words that you come across when you head down that rabbit mm -hmm. hole. It's a whole new language. It's a whole new... Um, Area, well, area of learning. So I came across a few people that didn't like me talking about it. Um, and I just have had to say that's their crap, not mine. I think there's, um, uh, my personal belief, and it has been before I ended up down this rabbit hole, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, was that we have wounds that, you know, that we carry around with us and, and they show up in uh, various different ways when people come and either shine a light or mirror something. Um, I'm a great believer in shadow side and, oh, and yeah. healing of the shadow side. Um, so um, yeah, this is, this is about healing the original wound. So this is about the emotional abusive relationships. And I, it's sort of combining everything sort of coming together from you know, like years and years of stuff. It's, uh, you know, so I've, I did, um, some past life regression work I trained years and years ago and um, learned a really, really deep healing uh, modality with that. And, uh, but I've talked about, you know, how we live in a theater state and how we learn and we repeat the patterns. Mm -hmm. Only I was doing it on a, on a coaching, business coaching type, you know, are you stuck in this, this hole of it being a, uh, whatever it was. I met so many bankers and doctors and people like that, that only did it to him because somebody else wanted them to do the job, you know, and this is where my, my, it had come from, but actually now I've got to this point and it's like, oh my God, it's, yeah, this just makes so much sense. These wounds that we, we, we carry around with us from childhood uh, uh, of being given to us through, I don't know how many generations, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, like the, the doctor, uh, you know, I, I met a couple of those that have only went into it because they, you know, that's what they was either expected uh, of them or, or they were impressing someone. Yeah. Well, you, you know, right at the beginning of our conversation, you were talking about, kind of feeling that you you didn't fit in and I think that's so common and we can end up doing all of these things in our lives to yeah. fit in yeah. you know whether that's the job you know the career that we follow or the way we behave in relation to others yeah it's like this desire to fit in yeah and to be accepted and to be approved of that can yeah and, and it, it's the, it is this rejection it's the rejection of the tribe so our tribe is our family mm -hmm. so um, if we don't want to be kicked out by our tribe who are there to protect us, we fit in with what yeah. they say and we, uh, you know, their rules and, and whatever, you know, um, their thinking. And, and, and in this time between uh, birth and like seven or eight years old, we're in this theater state, we take on these um, unknown um, limitations, you know, so, you know, people are, you know, I don't know, um, don't stand out, you don't make a, don't make a scene, you don't, mm -hmm. you know, those sort of things. Uh, or people like us don't have money, people like us don't, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Dot, dot, yeah. dot, fill in the blank, you know. And, and that's where we get it from. That's, you know, it's, it, it comes from our parents and they got it from their parents who got it from their parents. And this stuff is so outdated. You know, yeah. if you look back, you know, just a, a generation, two generations, you know, my parents um, were both uh, born just before the war. Mm -hmm. So they've gone through that and the rationing and, and uh, you know, living hand to mouth. And so, and, and their parents will have gone through the First World War as well as the Second World War. So all of these, these things are going, you know, saying no 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 you don't do that no you don't do that we don't do that or whatever it is yeah yeah we carry all of this stuff with us and yeah like yeah you said, it's just it's not it doesn't apply to how we do it look back even yeah two generations where they were two generations ago it's mm -hmm. so outdated yeah so, you know yeah. when you look at the law of uh, you know abundance the manifestation and stuff like that 
it's just so outdated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what's, what's it been like for you, Liz, you know, as we come towards the end of the episode, um, mm. this kind of journey that you've been on from like feeling that you don't fit in mm. to actually coming to a place where, you know, you are expressing yourself in the way you want to. And of course, like that's a process, it's a journey. Yeah. Um, but how has that been? You know, you've already spoken about how some people have like not necessarily approved of what you're sharing. <laughs> yeah. How, how has just, it been? Yeah. You? It is because of that conditioning from you know, uh, zero to eight. I mean, elements of that is still there and it's like, mm. oh my God, should I be doing this? Oh my God. You know, all those sort of things that the, yeah, the inner critic comes out and yeah. the, questioning um what's it like i think it's quite liberating i'm stuck at the moment it, i'm just waiting to take that next big leap mm -hmm. and i suppose that's part confidence as much as anything else um and i know i've got to do it but um I'm, it's a timing thing for me at the moment but it's yeah it's, i think it's quite liberating actually i had this i said i had this text well yeah i i i um uh, with my with the soul plan reading, I I, uh, I read something the other day, and that was from the guy that I trained with, and I was like, I sent him a text message, and I went, oh my god, I've been meaning to send this for like ten days, but and I said something, uh, you know, I was talking about this, and he said, yes, exactly what you're supposed to be doing, and I was like, oh, it's as if I now understand. It's taken me a long time to get here, um, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's it is liberating, but it's also you know that fear before you jump off something, you yeah. know, you jump into deep water, or you jump off, I don't know, whatever it is that you're gonna do, or uh, fireworks. It's that that stepping over <laughs> that first, you know, step on the coals. It's that. Yeah, it's it's not. It's it is. I think finding Lily was the first step. So, yeah. and, and this one, yeah, but there's that, fear. again, there's that fear. Do I know enough? Do I, am I good yeah. enough? It's, yeah. Exactly. It, yeah. yeah. And I, I, a part of that, I think, comes from being at school as well. Not, not really understanding what was, you know, what was going on. As I said, if, if there was a spirit school that I could have gotten to, it would just been so much easier. I think oh. I would have learned so much more. <laughs> Imagine I know. Kind, of kind of soak all of that up at that early age. That would just be so powerful, yeah. wouldn't it? Maybe there's a, there's something there. Maybe we should start a, a spirit school. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> oh, Liz, thank you, <laughs> thank you so much for joining oh, us today. Like what a magical, literally magical conversation we've had. Like I said, I didn't expect that we'd be talking about. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> no, no, it's no, oh, it's brilliant. Thank you. Oh, uh, how can people find out more about you and what you do? Liz? Okay, um, so my website is reviveyoursoul.co.uk. Mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook as Revive Your Soul. And Twitter as revive you are and then mm -hmm. soul your was gone um, and then I'm on Instagram as revive your soul um, yeah I think it's uh, yeah I that's those I suppose are the main ones info at revive your soul my telephone numbers on there drop me an email you know yeah. um, I've got a, a group as well for um, that's called mind the gap tribe and that's for uh, women recovering from emotionally abusive um, relationships. It's really small community, um, and I'm just sort of kicking it off at the moment. So that's um, something I'm just really passionate. I've just got so many projects that, yeah, I in my head, so many creative projects in my head that I just think, if only I had that support, if only I knew whatever it was, if only. So, um, so yeah, it's the, those are the website is probably the, the easiest one to, to to find me on. Fantastic, so. and we'll put the link to your website below this video so that people can find you. And 
you know, I was, we were chatting before we came on and we'll definitely get you on for another conversation when, the, book, when the new book comes out. We're not sure exactly when it's going to be yet. No, it's my, I think it's partly my fault. I've got to get the artwork over to them. So, okay. um, yeah, it's, I haven't quite got a date at the moment, but it's not long. It's yeah. written, it's not long. So I know, and it, actually when you said to me, I was thinking, actually it's the end of June now. I wonder whether I could get it for like the, the second anniversary or third anniversary of Finding Lily. Second, it was something like the 26th of August. So Ooh, um, yeah. wondering whether, you know, that, that sort of works out. <laughs> oh, exciting. Well, watch your space. We will, um, can you yeah. post it? And, oh, yeah. If we get Liz back on. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. It's oh, been fascinating. You're welcome. You're welcome. So thanks for, thanks for joining us. And we will see you again soon for another episode of Unbound. Bye. Thank you.